So hi everyone, welcome to our webinar series on AI and industrial solutions. So before we dive in, just a quick reminder, this event is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel. I am Christophe Lelanou, a member of the Franco-British Data Society and a the founder of Data Learning, a consulting firm specialized in data and AI developments. Building on the success of last week's webinar with Alexis Jean Tronot from OVH, I'm excited as well today to continue today exploring AI application in the industrial world with Michel Lutz from Total Energy. And don't worry if you missed last week's session, it is now available on our YouTube channel. Today, Michel, Chief Data Officer of Total Energy and Head of Data and AI at their digital factory, will share some insight into how they are using AI to accelerate the, their energy transitions. Total Energy has a strong presence all over France, but as well in other France and in the UK, and they are always looking for talented individuals. Before I hand over to Michel, for, this, for his presentation, let me take a moment, a moment to introduce the Franco-British Data Society. We are a new organization with a mission to promote education on digital and data related topics, while also providing a valuable networking platform. Our goal is to become an educational charity in the near future and to be able to encourage young people to pursue careers in science and technology. We already bring together a diverse mix of business practitioners, experts and non-experts, all interested in data, data on digital topics. Our discussion takes a Franco-British and European perspective, covering topics such as ethics, regulation, digital transformation, AI, governance, education, security and more. If you like what we are doing, I encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn or subscribe to our newsletter on our website. And encourage you as well to become a member in just a couple of clicks on our website. Some of our events, like today, are free and open to the public, while others are private and exclusive to members. And the more members we have, the greater the impact we can achieve through the society. <coughs> If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We are always happy to explain in more detail the aim of the society. My colleague Anne will share all the relevant links in the chat. Lastly, on the behalf of the Franco-British Data Society, I would like to extend a big thank you to our partner for this series, North France Invest with Artus Gallier and the British Chamber of Commerce on Industry of Lille, Nick Aida. We are thrilled to be working with them. Now, without further ado, I would like to hand it over to Michel, who will be introducing himself and Total Energy. Michel, up to you. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I am super excited to be here with you today. Uh, let me briefly introduce myself. So my name is uh, Michel. I'm the Chief Data Officer of uh, Total Energies. Uh, in charge of the global uh, transformation program in the company around data and AI. And I'm also the head of data and AI in Digital Factory. Uh, the Digital Factory is an affiliate of Total Energies uh, in charge of building a software application for the internal customer of the company. And I manage the team of data scientists and machine learning engineers in, um, uh, in charge of uh, deploying and designing the AI system that are embedded into these applications. I am very happy to be with you today uh, to talk about uh, AI uh, in total energies as an accelerator of the energy transition. Um, before uh, jumping into the AI, I think it's interesting to explain uh, what means um, energy transition and transformation in the uh, total energy for now. Uh, in this slide, you can see this is really the equation we have to solve today, uh, not only in total energy, but as, as uh, everybody in the world. As you know, we are in a situation where the 
population is growing with more and more uh, rising living standards. So we have to, to feed and provide the world with more energy. Uh, but on the other hand, in the same time, we have a global mobilization to achieve a carbon neutrality by 2050, which means we have to reduce the emissions. And so the question is how to, to provide more energy while reducing the emissions. And for that, this is the equation you are trying to solve all together, but also in total energy, how to provide uh, sustainable energy. In that way, we have a huge transformation in the company in total energy. You may know total energy as its historical activity around oil and gas, but no, total energy is really a, a global multi-energy company uh, that produces, distributes and markets all kinds of energy. Of course, we are still active in oil and gas, but we are now providing electricity, hydrogen, biomass, and very active also on renewable uh, production, especially on wind and solar uh, production. So really, the objective was of total energy is to be a key player in uh, energy transition. Just to give you a couple of figures about the size of the society for the people who don't know total energy, we have around uh, more than 100,000 employees uh, in more than 130 countries. Uh, and really, we are all committed together uh, to produce energy in this target of carbon neutrality by uh, 2050. Uh, maybe these figures are interesting to highlight a little bit how the change it means for us in Total Energy to be committed in this uh, multi-energy uh, path. Uh, as you can see uh, on the figure on the left, this is the energy mix of the energy produced by Total Energy in 20, 2023. As you can see, 41% of the energy produced by Total Energy was based on petroleum products and 50% on LNG and natural gas, and around 10% on electricity and low carbon fuels. The target we have by 2050, uh, only 25% of the energy mix provided by Total Energy will be based on petroleum, petroleum and gas, and around 50% will be uh, provided by electricity. So as you can see, this is a, a big shift for us, and all the energies and the talent of the company are focused on achieving this, uh, this objective. It's a strong commitment. We have a lot of uh, organizations evolution in the company for that. And of course, uh, digital is really a lever for this transformation. We strongly uh, believe uh, digital, but also data and AI is really a uh, uh, a key item if we want to be good uh, in uh, producing and distributing uh, multi energy as we try to do as a, as a company objectives. Um, I won't deep dive on this slide, but you just give you uh, how uh, digital and of course data and AI is getting bigger and bigger in the company. Uh, we had a massive acceleration uh, in the company between 2020 and 2025. Uh, because in 2020, this, this was the date when we decided to launch the digital factory, which was really a way to scale up all the effort of the company in digital, because we decided to gather uh, 300 people uh, in the same place, in the same offices uh, in Paris downtown. This is where I'm speaking, uh, speaking today. Uh, and so it was really a massive change, because we really invested a lot on digital, put the people together. Um, one of the objectives was also to have, yes, put people together, but also think differently the way we are thinking the digital, because before that, digital was mainly used to uh, improve some local pain point on the existing process. But now with digital, we really want to, to build new process, build new business model. And really, digital is a key neighbor and a key part of the business strategy of the company. So this is the situation today. Maybe just to explain a little bit how digital and AI are used uh, on the different business branches of the company, uh, because we have different challenges depending on the business. On this slide, we can, you can see the four major uh, uh, business vertical of the company. Uh, we have uh, exploration and production, refining and chemicals. This is the traditional activities that everybody know uh, based on oil and gas uh, production. Here we are using a lot uh, digital and AI for two big objectives. The first one is to uh, 
use this technology to decrease the CO2 emissions of this industry of these uh, industrial activities. And the second objective is to always uh, improve uh, the safety of the industrial operation. And for sure, digital and AI is a key enabler for that. I will show an example later. Uh, then we have all the activity around marketing and services. Uh, one of the very famous uh, activities of Total Energy in this field, especially in France, is all the gas stations. But as you know, today we are entering an era of electric mobility, and so we have to rethink completely the way we distribute energy. Uh, Total Energy, for instance, is very active on, um, uh, on the charging point deployment. Uh, it's also a new way to interact with customers with more and more digital interactions. So we have to fill in, yes, new interface, a new way of interacting with the customer. And last but not least, one of the very active business branch of the company is uh, the gas and renewable and power. In this case, digital and AI is really uh, a support to a very fast growth because we are uh, developing very fastly new capacity of production for uh, uh, wind and uh, solar electricity production. And for this, uh, digital and AI is a very strong enabler. Um, to do that, we are very lucky because we have lots, a lot of data into the company. I think it's always interesting to have this in mind because we are a kind of a big data company, an industrial big data company. I won't deep dive on all of this figure, but just a couple of examples to, uh, to highlight a little bit. We have a huge volume of data coming from an instance for all the geoscience and seismic activity. We have more than 50 petabytes of uh, digital active data. Uh, we are gathering data of sensors all over the world. Uh, for instance, oil and gas production, we have more than 1 million sensors deployed over the world to retrieve information on a day daily basis. Uh, wind turbine, solar power sites uh, are providing us with the new data point every day because we deploy very, very quickly new, uh, new industrial assets. So this is a lot of new data for us. Uh, we also have big customer database, more than 20 million of customers in our database. We have a lot of data on product services. So just have in mind, I, in the in total energy data everywhere. And this is super interesting when you are uh, when you have as me, uh, such as me, a uh, data science background, because you have a, a super playground of data that could be used to, to support the energy transition. So that's very exciting. Um, no, who is using this data? Uh, we have different kind of team uh, that are building uh, AI product uh, uh, on the top of this data. We have two transverse uh, company-wide center of expertise. Uh, one is the R&D department, which is more focused on uh, high uncertainty projects, more focused on research, and the digital factory, which is uh, my team. Uh, we are very focused, uh, the skills we bring is the technical implement implementation at scale. So not only building the model, but doing all the software that will uh, ensure the scalability and the deployment into production of the model. I don't know if there is some technical uh, people in the room, but this is the techniques we, we call the machine learning engineering, uh, machine learning operation, etc. So we are really the expert of the company in that field. Then we also have some specialized team. We have, for we have, for instance, one team specialized on the use of HPC, high performance computing. We have a very big uh, high performance computing in Po in France, and this is very, it is used for very specific applications like uh, numerical simulation and so on. And then we have uh, several other teams specialized on uh, very business application. We have one team uh, specialized on optimization of refining operation, another on, on power production, another on trading. And so all, all these teams are working together as a network. And of course, uh, last but not least, this is something we strongly believe in. Uh, we are trying to promote in the company what we call a citizen data user. So uh, Total Energy is a, um, a company with a strong engineering background. So we have a lot of engineers across the business and we want to uh, give them more access to the data and to tools so that they can do stuff by themselves, uh, be autonomous in uh, manipulating and using data up to a certain level. Then we take uh, the next step with my team when we need to do uh, scaling and implementation, but I think it's, 
data is more and more and AI, the, the business of everybody uh, uh, in, the, in the society and in total energy, and we are trying to promote that. Uh, no, um, to, to go concrete, because I'm pretty sure that's what, what you're expecting today to give concrete example of how we use AI for, for um, energy use cases. So I will give you a couple of examples. Uh, first of all, from some example on uh, uh, refining and oil and gas production, and then example for um, uh, electricity businesses. Uh, I, focus, I will focus mainly on the use case built with my team in the digital factory because they are the one I know the better. But have in mind that we are other team working in, in AI, as I mentioned before. Uh, this slide just to let you know that it was very difficult for me uh, to make a choice because we are working on a lot of products. We have. As I said before, the digital factory has been launched in 2020. We have developed more, uh, more than 80 products right now, deployed uh, in more than 25 countries. Uh, so it was difficult to make a choice. Also to have in mind, it represents a lot of models of AI model to production. Uh, uh, behind, under the hood of this uh, product, we have uh, several uh, hundreds and very soon thousands of models into production that we need to manage and to make, maintain over time. So it's uh, AI to production is something that is getting very big and very at scale uh, for total energy. Um, so let's start with an example. Uh, this is a product we have built. Uh, this one is used, uh, was firstly built for oil and gas production. It has been deployed on the FPSO, which are the industrial assets we are using to uh, produce uh, oil and gas uh, in the deep sea. Um, this is a platform that gathers all the data about uh, what we call the secondary equipment. So these are the small equipment such as a pump, uh, rotating machinery that are deployed into, uh, into the FPSO. And we are gathering all of the data of these activities. Then we provide some features for the, for the user to visualize this activity. And then we have built with my team um, a couple of uh, multivariate uh, machine learning models. Uh, that can be used to uh, detect and predict abnormal behavior in the in the uh, in the uh, when when this all of this equipment are, are used into production. So this is very useful because it could be useful to uh, to optimize to production, uh, to uh, order in advance of spare parts, to do the planning of the maintenance operations. Uh, from a technical perspective, what, what is uh, quite interesting is that we have implemented a feedback loop with the end user. So when the, when the machine learning is detecting, uh, is raising an alarm, uh, the user can say on the field if it was a, a good alarm or a false positive and give some explanation. And then we could use that to retrain the models. So this is working quite well, as you can see on the bottom of the slide. It, it is uh, deployed in a couple of countries. Um, so it's no, it's not only used only for uh, oil and gas production, but also this model will be deployed from uh, all the refining activities of the of the company. Um, another example, uh, this one is more focused on um, on a refining activity. Uh, we are working uh, on a, a product which is called Carbop Team. Uh, this one is really focused on a better understanding the CO2 emissions of the refining operation. Uh, so we are gathering a lot of data about the different uh, components of a refining. We are analyzing the data and then we are able to identify some non-optimal use of the machine and, pro uh, and, and recommend to the end user some uh, corrective or mitigation action. Uh, so that the end user could uh, fine tune the way uh, he is using uh, his uh, machine uh, to make sure uh, the CO2 emission is uh, as low as possible. Um, and so this is very helpful because we are using that to reduce the fuel consumption of the industrial units and also optimize the, the steam use of all of these uh, industrial facilities. So this is something that is under development, you have some very good results. Uh, it's currently used in the uh, Normandy and Donge refining, and it's going to be uh, deployed uh, later. So this is uh, yes, no, another example about how AI can be used uh, to uh, reduce the CO2 emission in the industrial plant. Uh, now I move into the electricity business. Uh, this is a platform we have built, uh, which is called Solid. 
Uh, this one is used uh, to detect where to deploy a um, solar panel. Uh, so here the AI part of, um, of uh, this tool is based in two main uh, family of algorithms. Uh, the first one is uh, computer vision models that are used um, to, um, that are applied on the satellite image and the objective is to find a given satellite image some interesting place uh, to put some uh, solar panels. So we are, we are detecting roofs, parking lots, etc. and we are uh, and we are calculating some characteristic about this place. Uh, what could be the potential uh, solar production, etc. So this is based on computer vision algorithm. And then we have a second layer of algorithm uh, that are taking all the output of the computer vision model, and then we add some business constraints into it, and, we are, and, and then we are computing um, uh, the best place um, to build a solar facility uh, from a business perspective. So according all the potential place, what are the most interesting uh, to deploy solar panel based on different kind of business contracts. So this is already used in France. Uh, and yes, this is a, an image of how we could use language computer vision, for instance, for, for, uh, for AI tools. Uh, this one is slightly different uh, because uh, we are not only energy producer, but we also have an activities in energy storage. Uh, Total Energy has an affiliate which is called SAFT, which is an industrial uh, battery manufacturer. And so we have deployed in the, um, uh, in the factory of NERSAC in France a uh, machine learning tool that is uh, used uh, to predict uh, bad quality during the, the production processes. So here the machine learning tool are collecting all the data coming from the in industrial activity of the plant and based on this data we are uh, predicting a risk of known quality at the end of the production process and so the quality engineer can use the, this information to optimize his uh, inspection process um, so yeah, this is more a manufacturing use case of, uh, of, of how we are using AI uh, in total energies uh, maybe a last example. Uh, this one is based on safety uh, because, as I said uh, in the introduction, uh, safety is very important for us. It is a core value of the company, and each time we can use a digital tool to improve safety, we are we are doing it. Uh, this is something that is still under the, the development uh, tool, which is called SafeWorld. And here um, we are building computer vision model uh, to detect a risky situation, um, uh, especially during the building of um, a solar uh, panel deployment. So here we have different uh, computer vision model that are used to detect if there is uh, some people uh, on, on the front of the camera, then we are trying to detect if the person have, are wearing the uh, personal protection equipment accordingly to the context. And so the risk is assessed as a combination of is there any person, uh, is this person wearing the, the, the protection equipment and based on the context. Because depending on the context, the rules of safety are not the same. And so we must adapt the, the detection based on that. Uh, this one is very interesting from a technical uh, perspective because here the challenge is we are trying to deploy the camera on site where the connectivity is often very low, and so we have to deploy the, uh, the AI model at the edge. So we must have very light model that can be deployed uh, directly on the cam on the camera with a small computer capacity. Uh, the model are not deployed into the cloud, so this is a technically uh, challenging uh, application, and we are very uh, happy to work on such case of of complex topic. Um, and just the last word, uh, before, because I see that the time is flying and I think we should have some time for the question, but before that, I give you a, a couple of uh, one shot example, but have in mind that uh, when we are talking about digital transformation, we are applying several use cases together to completely transform one, one particular industrial seat. So this is an example as we, we are with the um, uh, French British Data Society, I took the example of uh, the affiliate we have in Aberdeen, which is an, um, 
an affiliate that specializes on uh, oil and gas production. And here, this is a full roadmap of how uh, this affiliate is completely transforming itself by applying a couple of uh, digital solutions. So as you can see on the left of the screen, uh, we have there are some action on uh, self-service data, citizen data, as I mentioned before. So how to give access data to data to the people uh, in the in the affiliate so that they can build uh, by themselves some dashboard or, or small analytics. Then we have on the on the center of the slide all the digital applications. So a couple of digital digital applications I presented before are deployed. Uh, in this affiliate, but also other applications. So as you can see, there are dozens of different applications uh, to really enhance uh, the workers on the seat and the day-to-day -day processes. And then we also try also to have kind of uh, R&D activity, I would say, to test a new technology, uh, emerging technology. And for instance, as you can see on this screen, uh, today we have a lot of tests ongoing about the use of generative AI. Uh, which, which can be very useful, especially when we need to analyze a huge quantity of documentation, etc. We see a lot of um, possible improvement with the generative AI. And I think that's it about um, what I wanted to show to you today. Uh, just have in mind that we could stay connected. I'm very happy if we can uh, continue to have interaction after this talk. Uh, we have different way. If you want to do, if you want to more, know more about the digital factory, we have a technical blog on Medium. Uh, some people are interested about jobs at Total Energy. We have a well, welcome to the jungle page, one for all Total Energy and one specialized for the digital factory. And of course, if you want to keep some uh, uh, direct interaction with me, uh, feel free to reach me through LinkedIn or, or X. You have all the information on this screen. Um, thank you for listening to me. And I think uh, we can go to some questions if, if, you, if you have some. Well, thank you, Michel, Michel, for your presentation today. Uh, this was really exciting and fascinating. Uh, we have quite a few questions. I don't know if we will have time to go through all of them. But uh, <clears throat> yes, maybe the first question I will use my uh, privilege as well of to be the one speaking to to ask the first question. Do you use as well? Do you develop all your software internally, or do you use as well on the shelf software? And no. maybe as well, do you, especially for predicting failure, for example, on things like this, do you do you work in partnership with your suppliers? Yeah, of course. I think we are also, that, that's a, a huge question, and I think I will need more than two minutes to answer, but it's always a question we have in mind about a make or buy strategy, and of course, if we could use off-the-shelf solutions, uh, we'll try to use them. Uh, we have also some partnership with um, uh, with um, uh, with external customer, for instance, we have some big uh, partnership for all the analysis of the data related to geoscience. So yes, it's a question of strategy, but we are not doing everything by ourselves, of course. <clears throat> okay, Alors, and the question as well, one from Frédéric, but I don't know if I understand it uh, clearly. Uh, you are doing AI on premises, on the edge and on the cloud. So I, I guess yeah, I imagine yeah. according to your project, you are using all the solutions. Exactly. So here uh, in the digital factory, we are very the cloud specialist. So we are using uh, AWS and Azure, uh, but we have uh, strong activities around AI on-prem, uh, especially on um, high-performance AI based on our supercomputer in Pro, as I said in the presentation. So yes, we have uh, also it's a question of strategy because in some case we need the some specific computing capabilities. In some cases, we cannot put some data into the cloud and we need to stay on-prem. It's also a strategy that depends on the use cases. But we, yes, we are using both technology. Okay, and maybe more a couple of more technical questions as well here. How does Total Energy address the safety aspect of machine learning models during deployments? And how do you ensure compliance with regulatory standards in your AI deployments? And do you use federated learning? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of questions. Uh, very good oh, yeah, question. there are a lot of questions. Thank, thank you, thank you I guys. Don't know if we have I time to go through all of them, but. I see we, we have a very expert audience. I'm very happy to, to discuss today. So, yes. Yeah. 
Uh, so there's a couple of questions. Explainability, this one is very important, uh, especially because, of course, we have all the um, uh, IA Act, etc., et where we need to be able to explain our technical choice, but it's even a question of adoption for us, because um, as you have seen, a lot of use cases are very based on industrial processes, and we are providing the tools to the internal customer who are uh, engineer uh, who know very well the system they are working on. And so you cannot just say, trust the black box, listen to the AI, and follow the instructions from the AI. This doesn't work. We also always need to explain uh, to the end user why a model is providing such a recommendation. And so, yes, this is, we have different, so explainable AI, this is a huge topic, and I kind of deep dive on that, but this is something we are strongly committed in, uh, because it's, um, it's a way for adoption. And then, of course, uh, we are very active on being prepared for the AI Act. Uh, for that, we are, uh, current, we are working a lot with the cybersecurity department, which is, which is in charge of the global policy of uh, the AI Act compliance. Uh, and so, of course, we are updating our development process to be compliant, and we, also, we are also building some specific tools to make sure we are able to keep track of the model into production and we are able to monitor all the models that are deployed into production. So, yes, but I have so much to, to, to say about that, that maybe we should organize a, 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 a new webinar dedicated on that. <laughs> ah, it would be great as well. Yes, we'd be happy to do another one as well together. Uh, and maybe one considering the time. So I would be very interesting as well to know how you are looking to apply uh, responsible AI as well to all your deployments as part of your uh, strategy to reduce uh, energy consumptions, maybe. How oh, you mean a responsible AI um, as uh, because you to me, a part of responsible AI is about explainability, uh, trustworthiness into the model, etc. So this is, but uh, I think maybe smaller maybe model question, as well, simpler model, and uh, maybe maybe as well, yeah, uh, the, the question is more about the, uh, the, the yes the energy consumption of the AI activity. This is a good question. Uh, we are tracking that very closely. So we have um, uh, in the digital factory, we have a, a platform team. Uh, we provide some reporting about the, the fine ops and the energy consumption of the, all the activities we had. But to be honest, especially for the project we are handling uh, through the cloud, uh, very often run, we do not need so much computing power. Very often we can fix a lot of problems with um, a small subset of data. And so we do not have models that need to be trained during uh, days and days. And when we are more on that topic, we are more using the HPC computer uh, for simulation. And this this case, we have a lot of computation. But for AI, uh, the, the, the the figure are, very, are quite low for now, to be honest. Okay. Uh, maybe considering the time, as a sort of final question, there are more questions. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, guys, but uh, just maybe going looking forward as well. What do you? What are your main challenges as well? You see ahead for the for the digital factory at least. Uh, capacity to maintain all the development model. Uh, what are your challenging in uh, scaling, in integrating more complex model or less complex model? That's. Um, I think we have some. Just to conclude. Oh yeah, that's. So I think we covered a couple of points, but one of the question is technical scaling because now we we know how to put model into production and we are deploying more and more model into production. And so the question is how to keep track and keep the control under all of these models from a technical and legal perspective regarding the AI Act. So for this, we are building tools um, with our uh, digital platform team. We are building uh, tools that is called uh, AI Cockpit, which is which is retrieving all the information about all the model into production and that can share into a single dashboard all the information about the model in terms of performance, etc. So this is something maybe I will show during the next webinar, but this is something we're working a lot on. And another challenge, this one is interesting, is, and I think we could always improve on that, is how to connect the algorithm to the end user because uh, an algorithm, we always provide um, a mathematical optimum solution uh, 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 and how to make 
this uh, output of the model is usable by the end user. So this is a question of user experience and having a, 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 a smooth uh, relation between the algorithm and the mod and the user. This is something we could also always improve, and this is a very interesting topic. Uh, we are working a lot with the designer in the digital factory, for instance. Okay, great. Well, already six minutes past uh, two in France. Or seven minutes now, even uh, past uh, one in UK. So I think we are well overdue. But thanks a lot again, uh, Michel, for these uh, fascinating presentations. Uh, I would like again as well to extend another thank you to our partner for this series, North France Invest and the British Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Lille. So our next event in this series will be in January with Maison Florin. So which with a family business as well, a French family business going on for multiple generations and are trying to adjust as well now to the digital age in the textile industry. And next month as well, we'll be launching a new series focused on the build environments. So stay tuned for more details very soon. In the meantime, you can uh, register to our newsletter on our website and uh, to stay up to date. Registration will open shortly. So thanks a lot, everyone, and uh, I hope you learned a lot during your lunch break today. And uh, at least I discover a lot of things as well on uh, all the things you are doing at uh, your digital factory. Thanks a lot. Sure. Uh, Thank you for your time and talk to you another time, maybe. <laughs> looking forward to it as well. Thanks.